Yeah, it's worth it to go. I'm going to do it for the full 10 nights. My name is Kash Arshad. I am the director of 10 nights. 10 Nights is essentially about a young Muslim man doing itikaf for the first time. So itikaf is the last 10 nights of Ramadan, where you spend those last 10 nights in isolation in the mosque. Itikaf isn't for any Tom, Dick or Harry. You have to be religiously disciplined. My name is Shahid Iqbal Khan and I'm a playwright. Tradition like Ramadan and Eid, uh, the pilgrimage to Saudi Arabia, they're probably well known, but not many people know about Istikaf. My idea was to just write about that setting. And what the play explores is his journey through the 10 nights and how that changes him and affects his relationships with the other people in his life and in the mosque. Thinking, thinking. Yes, God. I'm Zaki. My surname is either Zed for Zaki or Z Zaki. I'm 28 years old. I'm an actor, born and bred in London. What drew me to the character is just how relatable it was. Like there are so many moments in there. I think even if you're not from a South Asian or Muslim background, you, you know these characters, you have people like them in your lives. And I think we've all felt like yes at different points as well. And he goes through so much with so many different people. And being able to perform all those other people as well has been a different way into understanding the central character of Yasser. Forget, I'm going home. I'm Safian, and this is my sign name. I'm 24 years of age, I'm deaf, and I have a cochlear implant. I communicate through both British Sign Language and English, and I'm based in Wales. From the first moment I read the script, I was quite interested actually. I felt like I could relate to it quite a lot and I'd had a lot of similar experiences in my life. So that was part of why I was so thrilled to be involved. I did it to carve myself. So it just struck me as a great idea to use the specific setting of the mosque and the Itikaf to talk about humanity, about people and their journeys and their relationships. That was the longest that we press ever. I try and focus, but it's so difficult sometimes. The character of Yasser, I felt a real connection with him. He was me growing up, essentially. Um, and the, the opportunity to bring theatre to the Pakistani community, to the South Asian community, to the Muslim community, and something that spoke directly to them was, for me, was really, really exciting. If the golf is for everyone, your attitude doesn't help people like me who want to improve their religious discipline. I'm Lilac Yossifon, and I'm the associate director on tonight. I was really interested in how the play focuses on the connection between identity and faith. Like, I'm Jewish, and Yasser's journey through the play was a journey that really resonated with me. As soon as I read the script, I realised that a lot of these things have actually happened to me before in real life. So it just meant that throughout the whole process, I didn't really stop smiling. It's such a funny script. There are really, there are dramatic moments in it, but it's such a fun read. And so it's just been, you know, there was no way I wasn't wanting to do this as soon as I read it. You dream of my roles like this to be able to play it like that. I think being me has shaped the writing. I'm deaf, I'm gay, I'm Muslim. So that meant a lot of facing up to who I am and communicating that to people around me and how, how that affects those relationships. So I think that influences my writing a lot. Um, my approach is very much, I am a, a facilitator. So I facilitate people who are really, really good at what they do into the same room and working towards the same vision. 
My name is Khadija Raza and I'm the set and costume designer for 10 Nights. So the starting point was trying to look at images of local mosques. We were also looking at some of the most beautiful and famous places in the world, but also drawing from our own experiences, um, me and Cash, the, the director. Our experience of having been to mosques in London, community centres and places where, where Muslims sort of gather, we both really wanted to capture the beauty of mosques and also all sorts of religious spaces. Prayer mats are supposed to be quite inviting, and that's something that both Cash and I remember from being in in mosques. We have a carpet that is often found in mosques, uh, which which sort of has the prayer mats on it. So we have that as our main feature, really. Itikaf is like a really specific ritual, I suppose, of prayer and seclusion. They're sort of really makeshift spaces. Mosques often have um, white sheets that they put up to create cubicles of sorts. The white sheet, which is sort of like a voile or a gauze that feels quite light, quite airy. So something that does the practical job of creating one of those cubicles, but also has the possibilities to be really beautifully lit and play with shadows and, and all of that. I can then catch both of them more beautifully. I'm Sarah Burns and I am the lighting designer for 10 Nights. So my research for this play was very much the wearing of Yasser's shoes, trying to be one with the characters so you can, you can then get the, the essence of what they're feeling. Again, it's about the emotion, it's about how it feels in here. You know, nipping the light back just a little tiny bit just brings that sense of intimacy into the piece. When you know that you, you have only a few specific tools to work with, you have to be so confident that you know what that lamp's doing because there's nowhere to hide in a studio. From where you hang them in the roof to when they hit the actor to where they kind of fall off onto the, the, the scenery, I was really keen to be able to um, es essentially illuminate the actors in such a way that made it magical but at the same time show the spiritual journey. I pray, I break fast, I read. I'm the sound designer on 10 Nights. A lot of the sound is based on the journey of time and space in the mosque and going deeper into his reflection during his Ithaca and how that experience changes over the course of that time. I eat. I pray, I silently scream. Creating a more abstracted clock, for example, was one way to mark the changes of scenes in the work, but also his evolution in terms of his own faith and his own personal experience. Quranic prayers obviously felt important, but I was also aware that it needed to be handled sensitively and appropriately, so that the use of Quranic prayers and call to prayers felt very much like they were embedded in that world, that the audience could really imagine that they were there. I think for me, really, it was just such a new challenge. It's not something I've tried before. I had such a laugh throughout the whole process. Um, there were so many fantastic moments that I enjoyed. I mean, obviously, the gentleman next to me, Zaki. I really enjoyed working with Zaki, I loved it. I think we made such a great team and we supported each other a lot. We've grown closer with each moment. We, I think we hit it off straight away, but playing with that and having that trust together and, and in the room and feeling safe with each other to, to explore and to play essentially has been a really cool experience. We wanted every show to be accessible for, for, for everyone as, as much as we possibly could. So we have, uh, we're integrating captioning into it, we have integrated uh, BSL, um, and we are also integrating audio description into the script itself. So there won't be a specific captioned or BSL or audio described performance, every performance is that. Um, and it's also performed in a, a, a relaxed environment. And the night when angels descend to earth. Trying to be as inclusive to every audience member's needs has been really interesting and really fun because while it might add a layer of an extra challenge, it also opens you up to a lot more options it's like an opera. Bad. Bad. 
so understanding how you can use it to the best advantage per scene or for the overall show and how both of us can incorporate that within the performance that we're doing has been really fun. It's a new experience for me and I'm really enjoying it. I think also uh, the environment was accessible which meant it was enjoyable for everybody. Anila. She came everywhere with us. Tumbos either played through creative BSL, uh, through English captions, audio description, and then there'll be some who don't know uh, English that well, so they'll be relying on the Urdu subtitles. So I like how this production acknowledges that everyone is coming from a different background, a different way of seeing the play. And I think that's really exciting. So it's been a new approach, understanding and recognising deaf audiences can still experience sound. Sound is something that is very visceral and it does, you know, it is experienced in the body. So, Cash, Director Cash, Sign Language Interpreter Shandu, I have pulled you both out of tech, sorry, but I just want to catch up. No, it's nice, it's nice. Um... And who are you? Who am I? Yes. Oh, I'm the, the tea and coffee person at Grey Eye. On a good day, I'm also the artistic director. I promised him I would do his ithagraph for him one day, and I can't even do that. Hat off to you. You run a really positive rehearsal space, a really nice tech, because I find them a bit scary. You know, everything's in the dark, I can't always see interpreters, but Shandu, you are always beautifully lit with your phone light. <laughs> and then, then, then Saf's got a sign, like, I've got you, Lilac and I've got you. It's all accessible, so it's, it's strangely calming. Oh, good. And I think what, what you, where, where you've ended up, it is different, mm. and what's ended up, you know, is a one-man show acted by two people is now, if I'm writing this, it's a one-man show yeah. with three people. Yes. Yes, yes, yes absolutely. Um, which is not what we set out to make, however. The changes that we've had to make, they've enhanced the show. They've brought a different dynamic. Like you say, Saf, Samaya, Zaki, they're all brilliant absolutely brilliant and just gone with these uh, challenges. But I'm just really aware that, you know, the process of what you originally thought, and it is a complicated but very straightforward play, mm. but when you get your curse in place, things just go, <laughs> they explode and you have to sort of like, oh my God, what am I dealing with? Mm -hmm. so what's that been like? It's been really interesting for me uh, in terms of accessible theatre, in terms of working with Grey Eye, uh, one person shows, um, and like you said, things have shifted a bit from our original um, vision, for want of a better term, uh, of what the play will be. So it's been, it's been really good. It's been learned a lot, but it has been a challenge. I would say Grey Eye is unique and working with Grey Eye has been an eye-opening experience. Um, even in the challenges, Grey Eye were able to put people first over the art. It's been the, the perfect environment for a show like this, which trying to get the best show made and trying to practically get things done to tell this story. And they've just been the perfect team for that. I think everybody on the creative team was really nice. Um, obviously there's occasions where things might not work as planned and people were open to ideas and suggestions and really patient, you know, willing to try other stuff. And no matter how many times something didn't work, maybe if we failed nine times, maybe it'd be the tenth that we finally got there. So it was a good environment because it felt like there was a lot of patience and understanding and we got there in the end. I came to know Grey Eye in 2018. I applied for their Right to Play programme. I, I felt it was quite empowering for me as a writer. And this play was one of the assignments. And the brilliant thing about Right to Play is that once the, the programme ended, your relationship with Grey Eye didn't end there. So I feel very privileged to still be here.
a Grey Eye and Tamasha co-production in association with Bush Theatre. Cast Yasser, Zaki Ismail, Aftab, Safian Iqbal, Anila, Performance Interpreter, Samaya Saitayeb and Chandrika Gopalakrishnan. Creative Team, Writer, Shahid Iqbal Khan, Director, Kash Arshad, Associate Director, Lilak Yosifun, Designer, Khadija Raza, Lighting Designer, Sara Burns, Sound Designer, Sarah Saeed, AV Designer and Consultant, Ruben Cook, Movement Director, Jennifer Kay, Dramaturg, Oladepo Agbuluaje, Casting Director Sarah Hughes, Production Team, Production Manager Callum Finn, Stage Manager Gemma Scott, Filmmakers Suki Mok and Ovin Armley, Second Camera Operator Ed Grant, Producers for Grey Eye Lizzie Luxford and Hetty Shand, Producer for Tomasha Debo Adebayo, Producer from Bush Theatre Oscar Owen, Access Team Sign Language Interpreters Yasmin Al Kalamichi, Amy Astley Barry Allen Davy, Sandy Deo, Chandrika Gopalakrishnan, Erin Hutching, Jade Odal, Samaya Saitayeb, and Beverly Wilson, British Sign Language and Linguistics Consultant Daryl Jackson, British Sign Language Islamic Advisor Halid Ashraf, Audio Description Consultant Gurpreet Singh, Access Coordinator Vicky Berry, Grey Eye. Thank you to all the staff at Grey Eye, Tamasha and Bush Theatre. To find full credits, please visit greyeye.org forward slash 10 nights support. Supported using public funding from Arts Council England, Esme Fairbairn and Garfield Western Foundation.